Okay. So, when we look at this model, there are so many pieces. And when we rig it, we kind of want to um, organize the hierarchy so that we can find things easier. And um, especially if you work with a other people, you want it to be, uh, it would be better if the other, when they look at it, they can make a guess where each hierarchy is separated and where it's supposed to be things. So, and, um, okay, so now, the first thing we want to, we want to be able to move the body, right? Okay. Now, this is a little more complex. We have to have different sub-hierarchy, mean control, to control everything moving with it. And then you have another sub-control, for example, we want to be able to unmade this to push down while the uh, robot are moving. This is for sharp absorption, right? So, and we're gonna add spring on there. So now while we want it to move it down, we want some part to move with it. And there are some part that we don't want to move with it. For example, the hatch, of course, we want them to be followed. So now, this one, I set the pivot point. Let's look at on the left and right hatch. I set the pivot point that ready to be animated. However, we will most likely and usually we don't animate directly on the object itself. We want to create another controller for it. So in this case, we're going to do that because we want to make sure that all the hatch uh, follow the body right but we can have a controller to control the hatch so better to do it first before we make it follow the body so now if you look at you can use circular curve or any type actually i'm going to use this guy that i have if you copy mine into it and you have to restart your application you will get the controller. If you don't have mine, just use circle and prepare your circle. I'm gonna change the orientation and I'm gonna use the arrow to be inward. There we go. And I'm gonna do on this side first. Now, when you do raking, it might be a good idea to organize and understand what is your scene, like uh, your orientation of the scene. So, right now, positive Z, can you see right here, the blue color, indicate font view. Negative Z indicate back. And positive X, this can be a little confused, is consider left. Uh, actually, I think it's a right oh, it's a right view. But I can use this as a left because I'm getting confused myself. I I like to follow the uh, actual camera, so I'm gonna face forward to the Z axis, Z positive, so my left side will be on the positive X. Now when you do on your own it doesn't matter which positive or negative you're gonna make decision to be left. It doesn't matter as long as you organize every single object on that side is the left or right. That's it. So, so I'm gonna use these. I'm gonna name as a left side. So I'm gonna put L. Short name for left. I can just organize them. Underscore curiosity because of the name, right? So curiosity and body hatch so bd hatch mash oh controls this one ctl okay and i want to make sure these are correspond the same name so let me click on the left hatch so i'm gonna rename it to be mash same name basically just a name convention so this is going to be on the right, so let's do it now. Change to R. And go ahead, scale this down. Basically, I want 
the pivot point of the controller to be wherever I want it to be animated, to be a pivot animate. So I can look at on the top view first, and I'm going to reposition. It's about midway of the shape of the uh, hat shape of the door. And can you see? I'm going to put the center right around there. Look at on font view. Move it down so that the place is right on the top part of uh, the, the top part of the object. Just like this. I'll give you a few minutes. And then you just need to scale it down so that it's a little not too big. But not too small. And if you like to see the arrow, you might want to rotate the arrow a little bit. There we go. So that we can see the arrow. And I just use that arrow so that it's pointed to like the uh, to the center of the the uh, the hat. Patches. Give you a few minutes. Something like that. Don't need to be too big, but don't make it too small because it's hard to select. The purpose of controller is to be easy access. Does it need to be exactly on the like the inch one? Um, it might because it should. It's just because of if it's not, you're gonna see the gap when you rotate it. So now, if there's no close up, it's no big deal. <laughs> And then face transformation as always. So, and now we are not going to parent it first. If we parent it right now, we can't duplicate and put to the other side because you're going to have the child with it. So let's duplicate this first. Control D, duplicate, and now I have two curves on my uh, outliner. And the new one, I'm going to put R instead of L, L, R, uh, controller. Now, because I built this symmetrical, so the location has should be exactly the same spot as the, the, uh, the, the right side. So now, in, instead of moving that into its location, it's too much work. This is what we can do. After you duplicate it, you look at on font view quick. Okay. Go to font view. Now, group it to itself. Edit, group. When you group it to itself, can you see by default, Maya will put any create node, any object on the center of the world space. <clears throat> so this makes it a little easier for us to mirror it. Now to mirror the group, there's a technique you look at on the uh, f-axis, we're going to put it on the other side of positive x. So it means we're going to change scale x1 to negative 1. Now, after I press enter, can you see it's flipped to the other side. So now we have to ungroup because we don't want to leave this group. Just ungroup. Then now, it will leave you as rotation 180 degree and minus z as it because that's the local object space. No big deal. We're gonna freeze it, modify and freeze. Here we go. Now we exactly same. Mirroring look. And we ready. So it's an easy one. Now if you want to use exactly the same circle, same controller to the font hat, let's duplicate that. Control D. And this time we do not do mirroring, we just move. <laughs> because it's different location. It's not reversal location. And I'm going to call FT font body hat control. You know, now on this one though, we need a little modification. I 
design a little bit uh, incorrect because I taper it down a little bit because based on extrusion, if you switch to four, can you see they are not straight line? So let, let's move the uh, controller to fit just only one area like that. Okay. So when they are not straight line, when you rotate them, this side will be deep inside. These will be floating above the geometry because you think of this like a, it's like this, right? So when you rotate it, rotate like this. But if it like that, it's gonna, this one gonna go in or this one gonna go above. So because of, they are not straight line, I mean, we can fix that by really we aren't the object, uh, the controller to match, but it's too much work on rigging because we have to set a, a preserved node and then um, use the group node and then constrain this point and zero out this in order to line up with the zero volumes on all of this. Because if you freeze, it will flip back again. It will not be perpendicular, like, uh, it will not be projecting like this. See, if it matched with that angle. So these are not matched. You can see right away, right here is offset, can you see, right there. So that will have a gap. So in this way, we need to fix the actual geometry. So select the geometry, go to component mode. I'm going to use verti uh, vertices. And then basically you have to make it look like straight line, just eyeballing it. Move it a little bit so that they look like straight line. And then do the body part too. So that eliminate those gap. Yeah. You're just moving vertices. So that they look straight line. We can do just only on this side because that what's going to be on uh, the open. Now when you're done, just reposition your controller again. You might need to look at on top view and front view. See they kind of line up. And if it doesn't look perfect, you can fix them again later too by moving them again and again and again until you get it right. So, don't have to be perfect. You got, sorry? Can you look at on my screen? This is how I do it. I just right click on the uh, surface, vertex, and I grab all of them. I'm on top view, and then I just move it like that. Go to vertex and region drag like this. Yes, like that. And then just move one direction. Here we go. And then just eyeballing it. See if straight line. And then you do it on the body also. The body is it. Select the body, right click. And then just move one corner. Yep. And right click. You have to right click. Here we go. And just region drag. The reason that I want you to do region draft because I have a thickness. So you have to make sure you select top and bottom vertices. Okay. So now when you get the position of the controller, just freeze it. Save your file, save scene as. Make sure save scene as. And um, just call rig into zero one. Don't override it so that you can go back if you need to. Okay. So basically you're gonna parent you're gonna make all the hat to be a shell of those controller. Appropriate one. So you select the left hatch to the left control, the right one to the right control, 
and the front one to the front controller. That's it. So select the child first, shift select the controller, and press P. Clarity. Shortcut. Do all three of them, one at a time. After you've done that, just taste, select the controller, and rotate. Now, when you have a controller, the object that will be controlled doesn't have to have a pivot point same as the controller. Does not have to. So, it will work because it's used the pivot point of whatever is driving it. I'll give you a few minutes. One more minute. Um, yes. When you parent something to something else, it's, do you click the, the parent first or the child first? No, you click the child first. Okay. Child? Yes. For, for parenting, child first to parent. For constraint, you parent first to child. Then shift P. P. So P is a shortcut. A P is parenting. Shift P is unparenting. Um. I mean, it's under edit menu, parenting. Right here, parent and unparent. Okay, one more thing, guys. On the outliner, can you look at, I have a group node on it. <laughs> because I repositioned this, this guy, the handle. I want it to be straight flat. So I want you to freeze up. Uh, Ungroup it. On the group one, ungroup it. Edit, ungroup. And then while still selecting all the member, freeze them. If you miss this part, still okay. We can freeze them later too. Just try to organize it. Sit down. Come on. All right. So now we Wait, want did you say did you want us to group them again? No no no. Okay. The reason that I group them because I want to reposition them together. So now what we need is we need all of these controller to be a child of the body. The body match. And once again guys, you could actually create a locator of group node and then put all of those control and the body mass into the group node or into the locator and call locator that all body that would work too so but this is seem like uh, easier for now so i use the select all the controller and shift select the body the body is somewhere there and then just press p so basically we put all three controller inside the body mesh and each controller has another child so it looked like this on my hierarchy can you see hey i forgot to rename the front one we do all of us <laughs> so the ft curiosity but uh, bd hatch control can you copy that name and rename on the mesh, just add mesh instead of control. When it's named properly, easier for everything. Okay, so now it looked like this. If you look at on my hierarchy, curiosity, body mesh, and has three children but each children has grandchildren so it look like this one and each children each control has one child so this will be easier for us to look now we are not going to animate the body directly though know. we're going to have another controller to push the body down so, like this. 
No, uh, Flynn, can you select one, two, three, and then shift select the body and press P. That's it. And then now you can go find it where it is. So it's called Curiosity Body Badge. Okay. So next, let's create a controller that can push the body down. So I can use the arrow key, not the arrow shape. And I'm gonna scale it down. Move it above. Don't need to make it too big. And I'm gonna rotate so that it can see on the side view. Most of the time we probably animate on side view. Not most of the time. There we go. Most common. And I'm gonna make this a little skinnier. You can reshape it by going inside component mode. This might be too too high. And then let's freeze transform. Now, if you look at on my front view, it's right on the center of the X. And um, because I built everything from the center, easier to figure it out, easier to rig. And now on the side view also, because I have these extended, so they are actually on 12 grid. So six on left, six on right. So. Go ahead, this transformation. We're gonna rename, we're gonna call uh, Curiosity uh, Body Down Control. You can see BD down. It's just a name. You can name anything you like. And basically, these will control the body. Up and down movement. Not forward, backward. So basically, I'm going to put these in a shell of, uh, make the uh, curiosity body match to be a shout of body down control. Press P. Select children first. Select select child first. And now test. If you move the arrow icon, this should move down. Later on we're gonna limit how far we can move and limit some other information. We don't limit it now because we're gonna have to parent a few things later including the shop, including the camera, including these things and so on. So now we're gonna move into a little more complex part, which is the body, uh, the shock. And it's not that complex. So let's hide something that we don't want to see yet. So if I, we want to see the um, these objects called shock spring base mesh and then cap both left and right. So look like this. I'm selecting it, and I want you to remove it from the layer one temporarily by right click and choose remove selected objects on the layer one now when I hide layer one everything else should be go away um, this controller is not we can add into that layer one too let's do it and the cap yeah okay. do we have anything else no. should be that soon and then the body control you can the move control you can add into a layer one make sure you hide layer one turn off visibility it's just because it's too many things to see no that's correct that's correct 
because I was on wireframe. I was on wireframe. Because shortcut for wireframe is four, four and five on your keyboard. Four and five. Okay. Hide everything else except for this. So what we're gonna do is this. This part will follow the body down like that, compress it. But the bottom part will not follow the body down. We'll just follow the whole body, the main control, basically. So now we're gonna have to create a spring and make it looks like it can compress. So we're gonna use a blend shape technique. Let me save this and let me create a new scene. You can just watch, don't need to do it. Okay. So blend shape is under rigging, deformer and blend shape. Okay. So now blend shape is actually prefer to have a same topology. So let me show you something quick. I'm going to have to reshape a little bit. Okay. So I have three object. We can blend. If I select one, two, and three, the last one will be the target that we want to keep. And now blend shape node, I can name something if I want. Let's see if I can, uh, I'm not, I'm going to just leave it there. Now there's a delete and keep target. So if you want to keep target so that you can re-modify the uh, target and then we'll update to the uh, blend shape, you can do that. So now there's an in-between and check topology. Check topology prefer to be all on. Origin always like to use local. There will be certain time that you might need to use world but red. Now in-between, I will talk about that then. So if I click apply, there we go. so I did not delete the target. So all of these can be modified. This is the shape. I have blend shape and I have two width. First width, here we go. Second one, can you see? So, and I can do mid width and I can modify, uh, m m uh, multiply the shape number three. So now the in between though, it will create a kind of continuity. So it will go to the first selection and then the second selection. So in the past, people do this with the eyelid like this, for like example, nobody uses it anymore. So this is the eyelid, lower and upper, right? So you have a blend shape, one, two, and three. So when you can create between, they will connect one, two, and three. So when it open, I, I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit. When it go like this and push and then come back. So that will cut through the eyeball. But nobody use it anymore. So because now we use cluster, we use bone itself to control the eyelid because it's easier and better control. So, but there will be some time though that you might want to use this. For today, we don't. So that's how we create the blend chain. So let's go back to our scene. So we're gonna create a spring. Let's do that. Now the spring shape is helix. So under create menu, polygon primitive, helix, and create that. It will look like that by default. It looks a little awkward. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's make it a little smaller. So radius 0.4 is too big for this scene, so let's do point zero two. Might be too small, I don't know yet. Okay. And the height two is seems too far away from there. Let's do point let's do one. Okay. I already know the volumes the number but I pretend not knowing yet. So and this width is too wide, let's do 0.5. Okay. 
There we go. Look like that. And let's position it. Um, use shift. Oops. Hold shift key and select the cap. I'll do the right or uh, the left side first. And we can align it to there. I can't align it to this object because my pivot point is right here. It's not on the center, so we'll align to that point instead. But this one, pivot point is on the top, but center of that cylindrical shape. So that's why I decided to use the cap. So now, you don't really have to use align to. You could just move manually, but I want you to use it because it's helpful. After you turn it on, let's go ahead and align to the center align. Here we go. Can you see? And and then we're gonna have to make some movement adjustment a little bit more. Now let's move it down. It's already aligned to that center of the uh, cap. So move this down. I'm gonna use side view. You can do front view too. Just move it down, right around there. Now it's too high. The, the, the height is too tall. I'm going to press 4. I want this to be right around here and there. I don't want it to be, I mean, if we do the higher, longer, we have to make a little more adjustment when it compresses because you will not see there, but the range of the compression will be based on top to bottom. To make it a little easier, let me do 0.6. This might be better because we can save space on the resolution of the geometry too. So instead of have maybe 10 more coil, we have we can have only uh, three coil or less, right? So now let's increase the coil. Let's do six. Here we go. Six. I think six might be too dense because we wanted to squish. A little more so let's do five here we go okay and I'm gonna switch to five uh, press five switch to a uh, smooth and shade all definitely too wide so let's do point three five almost good let's look at our perspective view press five Look at under it. Can you see a little pernatated? Actually, my, yeah, it does, pernatated. So it has to be less than 0.35. How about 0.32? Yes. 0.3 is too small. And the core, right now we get five core, 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 sorry, my English. I think it's too less now. So let's do, how about six? Six, go back to six. Because when we, small, uh, we make the width a little smaller, we get more space. And um, this is not a good design. Look at this, this is open. It should hide it somewhere. So in the future, if you want to do something like this, make sure you hide this too. And it real spring, at the beginning and the end, they are really squished to each other. That's create a uh, uh, hard, hard part, so so that they don't bend easily or they don't squish at all. So we don't have to animate. We don't have to build that shape. We could if we want to in the future, but we're not doing it. So now we got to name this. So we name a L Spring Extend. Extend mesh. There we go. And oh, mesh and mesh. And we're gonna create another spring for compress. Now you could duplicate this, but you have to make sure that duplicate with the input. The reason is because we wanted to change the height to be shorter, but have six 
plus width and radius, exactly the same as the original. So, oh, I forgot, guys, this is too, too big. Subdivision. Let's do six. We can't do four, but we can do six. Uh, the reason is four become diamond shaped looking. Um, now, the subdivision quartz, 50 is too high. Let's do 20. And it still look good, right? Can you see? What if we do 15? The, the reason that, is because we, we don't have a lot of geometry, we shouldn't do too many segments. So now my 15 still look good. And if you press 3, it will look just rounded. 3 is the smooth display. So I'm going to bring it back to 1. I don't want you to get confused yet. So, like this object, they all low res. If I press one, can you see that's the resolution? But I press three, and then I create a, uh, a hard edge, uh, a crease edge, to get that effect. So, okay. So now we need to duplicate, but duplicate special with this input. So go to edit, open up duplicate special option, and you're gonna use this. Let me reset quick. Turn on input graph. It will copy input of helix one and create a new helix that has that input. Go ahead, yeah. Under edit duplicate special, open up option. You got it? Yep. And then turn on input, create a uh, duplicate input graph. And then go ahead, duplicate spatial. You got two of them now. If you look at on outliner, it's right on top of each other. So while we're still on the uh, mass number one, the, the duplicate one, let's rename that from extend to compress. Compress. And then mash one, or compress mash. Here we go. And then can you see that there's an input helix two, and that's what we want. Go ahead, change the height, point three halfway. Here we go. Let's look at on side view, so that we can compare. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. I could see there's still a lot of gap, like space. I can reduce it more. How about point two eight? Do okay, 0.25. That's big. I want it to squish, like really squish. <laughs> so that we can move the body a little lower if we need to. So 0.25 on the height. Now it's time to change pivot point because when we do a um, blend shape, if we have a pivot point right here, it will squeeze like this not from top to up oh, sorry not top to bottom like that so we need to make sure that pivot point right right there but still center though so now let's take a look at it quick oops right, here we go. to change the pivot point i want you to just look at on my uh quick uh, my first before you do it okay so because we want it to move down along that center, but into this label of object. So we can do a little snap technique. If I hold V key, V key is snap to vertex. Now I grab only Y axis. Can you watch this air, watch this view when I move? Oh, oh sorry. D and let me press that. Can you see it move? on the center but it snap each vertices on the side view so i can make it snap to that vertices but maintain to the center that because i forcing to move only one direction i move only y direction don't move it on perspective you move it on the side view but you can see on the perspective it maintain the center but it sit right at the level of vertices 
on the last chord, on the beginning chord. So now do the same with this one, the big one. So V key again, and let it snap to the lowest part of the geometry of that object. And then press D back. Now you need to move the compressed core to be exactly, uh, the base has to be the same position. So you don't have to press a uh, D key, just move it, literally move the object. So I use snapping technique again, so there's it really snap at the end there. So when you compress, it will look like the pivot point on the bottom, not from the center or off center. Okay. So it looked like this. Here we go. Can you see it right there? The first, uh, the short one and the long one, the the base are match. Okay. So now we're gonna have to clear this volumes a little bit the uh, transformation and the input you need to clean it so select both go to modify freeze transformation and then go to edit delete by type history shortcut is alt shift d to delete history now it's nice and clean and ready to do blend shape so there are two objects. We're gonna pick the compressed one because we want the uh, extend one stay still. So we select the compress, shift select the uh, extend, go to deform menu, open up blend shape option. I want you to rename this a little bit. We're gonna call L and uh, spring compress. Uh, under deformer and the first one blend shape. Okay. I'm gonna put spring compress. Actually, spring L spring masks <coughs> you find too because this is gonna be the name of the new object. Mesh. Oh, no. And. I want you to delete the target because you're going to get confused. Just delete the target. And go ahead, click create. Now everything will be vanish except for the last one, the extend mesh. Now the input call uh, L spring mesh. When you highlight it, you will see a spring compressed mesh. It used the name of the uh, object, the target object. And now, if you slide this, you can highlight or you can just move. Oh, you can't do that. So highlight and middle mouse grab from outside. So you got this. Let me undo again. This is how I do it. There you, go. you select the compress one first. Shift select the. Uh, uh, extend and deformer. Oops, I can switch to wicking. Deformer blend shape option, and then you can call L spring mesh. So that is set blend shape known as L spring delete target create, and that's it. So now you should get that. So I'm gonna leave it to zero. I want it to be. A extend save now there's a, a few way to create this uh, auto compress you could use set different key the simpler way but it's not auto it's based on your key but we can do auto I'm going to show you how to do auto a little more fun um, so I can go to site view we need to create a management tool and we're gonna use that distance tool to control the mesh volume. So, under create, mesh tools, distance tool. 
and let's we want it to be kind of that level you don't have to do snap but you can so if I hold V key when I click it it's gonna snap to that point just V key click and then on the bottom you do the same V key and click here we go so and that's the volumes six point up uh, point six three seven one one six, uh, one two two that's just a volume that's good no, you don't have to. Because of uh, those V, they are exactly ver uh, exactly same same vertical, same plane of the vertical. I mean, just remember rule of thumb is uh, you want straight line. That's it. So if you don't have a vertex to snap or shift, so that is constrained to the straight line. I mean, if you do a little offset, some of the rig part, it might kind of twist in the wrong way. Um, this one is not going to be any problem, actually. So now, what we want to do is, we want these volumes, when the chains control the volumes of this. Now, we cannot really con correct them, or connect them directly, though. It's because the volumes start differently. It's only... Uh, because this is, we can compress from six, uh, from, from 0.63 to zero, right? But this is one to zero. It's different. So we need a little trick. We need a little utility to help. They call set range. So they can compare two range. It's just like, do you remember when you use a, uh, um, gosh, how did I forget the name? Um, normalize view on curve anybody using that normalize view on curve when you do animation you compare them so they're different volumes but when you normalize it they fit into the same scale so you can tell where the easing out and easing in on one curve you want to match the other curve even though they're same different volumes like translate and rotate translate 10 units rotate only five unit but you can compare the speed of the easing in and easing out that's the same way so now this is the way uh, let's rename this before we move on i'm gonna copy that name and gonna call this i'm gonna call top uh, spring just l spring is fine spring in a uh, top locator And I'm gonna copy that name and rename to bottom on the other one. Bottom, top and bottom. Here we go. And just to make this a little cleaner, let's freeze the locator. We can freeze the locator so that the actual attribute editor is set to zero, but locator will preserve is absolute worst space right here. So now go to modify these transform. Go to locator. So now it's clean on top. So that when we move to test, we can zero it out easier. Give you a few more minutes. So next thing we need to do though, we need a little help from a hyper shade because utility is uh, easy to find under hyper shade. So can you click on hyper shade right here, this button, and you should get this window. And I did not delete my a range, a set range from the last rig. So can you look at on hyper shape under bin, click on utilities bin, bin. You will see two of them. Can you highlight and hit delete? Those are left over from the previous breaking. So now to create a new set range under Maya, standard Maya on the create palette, 
look for utilities. There's a bunch of utilities here. Well, we need to filter it out to what we need. Set, just type set. You will see set range. And then just click on that set range. Now, this window is a working area. Sometime when you clear it or you deselect something, it will be gone. So I want you to focus on the bin. Click on utility bin, you will see your utility node. Any utility, utility node will be inside there. So I want you to rename this set range to L spring. L spring set range. So so that we have L and R spring. Okay. So can you move this window to another monitor? Now we're gonna connect, we're gonna output the uh, distance node to the volumes of the set range. We're gonna input those volumes so that we can use set range to compare and then compare the uh, distance, the range of the first input to the output. Okay, the output will be a blend shape. So now, Let's open up a connection editor, window menu, general editor, connection editor. Look like this. Because I set the range, I select the set range, oh lord, right away. Just clear all. Now the output, we want these volumes, this. I can select it on the screen, the distance. Oh, we forgot to name the distance. Got to name it. We're going to call a uh, spring distance dimension. You can just leave. Just delete dimension. Here we go. Distance. Okay. So that shorter name. Now, right now on channel box, when we lower to the left, you will not find the distance node, right? Because, because of what? You guys remember? These are translate nodes, so it's lower translate, but that volume is input under shape. So if you look at on the outliner, oh no, attribute editor, the third one, the third one from the right, the icon, and distance, dimension, shape, attribute, there's a starting point, end point, blah, 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 blah. In th these are three axes. But this is the volumes we want. But they are not listed on here because whenever we select the object, Maya will load the first hierarchy first into any output or whatever window it is. So we have to activate the second input, the uh, second hierarchy, which is the shape node. You click select, it will focus on this tab. Because you select the tab, select the, the second hierarchy, and then you can load to the output, which is on the left. Load it. Now you will see distance volumes there. Distance has to be. So you have to make sure if you select the object, you open up add to build and find the hierarchy that contain the attribute you wanted to load. And then you click select and then you reload it. Okay. So highlight these things. And now use the hypergraph. Yes. How do you make the shape, the that spring distance shape show up in the connection? You have to select the uh, distance first. Open up attribute editor. And then on the second tab that said distance shape and check see if the volume's there, you click select and then you load it. Select button on the attribute editor. Okay, so now select the L spring set range and load it to the right. Now the L spring, uh, the L spr uh, the set range is utility. It's not a transform node, 
So basically, you cannot move on screen. So that's why there's no transformation node at all. So now, distance will con will input this output and then input to the volumes. And you can use any volumes actually. You can use Y, you can use Z, as long as the out volumes is Y or Z. This time we're gonna use the first one, X, because it's easier, it's on top. And right now is RAN is set 100% on the output volumes. And we will come back on this. So this time we can reverse it because we're going to have to output the set range to the uh, blend shape. We need to switch this to the output. So select the set range and reload to the output. Reload it. I'm not clearing the screen, that's why I see both. However, if you look at on it, the difference is when the set range become input, there's no output values on the on the selection. Right? That's there. So now select the uh, shape blend shape, the spring, open up attribute editor because we want to load the uh, blend shape and blend shape is called L spring match that's what we name it active that tab so L spring match if you did not rename like mine just find the one that kind of makes sense about the shape blend shape and look at on the content inside you should see blend shape the name you can still rename this but then the weight. My weight is called L spring compress mesh because we use the compress mesh as a uh, as a target blend. So we're gonna load this tab to the right side input. So click select and reload right. Now we're gonna connect the out volumes. So the out volumes we out uh, we in in volumes from X, right? Yeah. Uh, how did you get to say uh, spring? Mesh? You select the spring yeah. and go to attribute editor and find the tab that contain a blend shape. Right. And then you click select oh, okay. and then you load it. Let's take a break quick. Yes. <laughs> Actually, it's not recording. Oh, yeah, a little pause. And remind me to re record, okay? <laughs> so now we're going to output the volumes X to where? Expand the layer and highlight it. And we're going to close this now. Oops. Out. Out volumes X because we input to the X, right? So we have to output from X. Because if we output from every other attribute, there's not no information to output. So and we can close that. So now you will see a little shift things going on there. So don't worry. Click on set range. We have to work on this part. Click on set range so that we can see. And can you see set range? has an input spring distance incoming to okay so that's the volumes that incoming and then now what we're going to tell is we have to make sure that the volumes on the current volumes and equal to the old max volumes the old max volume make sure you select the uh, set range okay. and the old max volumes on set range is the distance. So it's that number. It's basically this number. So copy that and put it to the old max. Here we go. And it will snap it back. It because this is we're telling Maya that okay, this is the range, this is the volumes we wanted to control it, but 
we want to make sure that original volumes is used at the OMAX, its original volumes, which is the distance to it. Okay. Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. So, these need to be matched, basically. If something shifts, if you do really low, low, sometimes you don't have to. Most of the time you have to do this. Because we want to set this is the maximum of the actual volumes from the incoming. So now let's test, grab this, and move. Nothing worked. No big deal yet. So it's just because we are not done telling Maya yet. So let's move it down just like that. And go ahead, reselect the uh, set range again. So we have to tell them that, hey, either min or mass, that's why it's controlled, whatever is moving here. So at this point, you can try minimum or maximum first, and if it doesn't move change, switch to different things. And I already know that minimum, it should be one. On minimum. You can try minimum to 0 0.6, 3, 7 also. So now when you do that, it seems kind of, hey, get to somewhere there. Because it's this, right? See? It's like extend to kind of a little bit, but not fully. So now make it easy. Just do one. Easier. And then now the problem with this is these are go too fast and the spring are go too slow. The distance are go too fast, spring are go too slow. Yes. Okay. Let me undo quick. Okay. So right now you you need to uh let me bring that back to zero again. So right now at this point we change the volumes, we matching the uh, original volumes to the current one. We're matching it. This is the current volumes, and this is the old volumes, because right now we haven't moved anything yet. If the old volumes doesn't set, it's set to zero, it's compressed right away somehow, because of the range are not matched. Think about this, the distance range are shorter, and then the, uh, because it's 0.6, right? But the uh, shape node, blend shape is one, 100%, zero to one. So they are long. They can't be matched, right? So what we are trying to do is we try to compensate them to make this volume change so that it looks like it's matching. Yep. So now, when it compressed, you just grab the current volumes and set to the old max. So um, I did that, and it's still compressed. It's still compressed? Yeah. Did you have any volumes on this? minimum of you have volumes on it yeah, that's fine that's fine that's good that's good so now can you move this down somewhere like midway let's do midway I mean doesn't matter so now nothing move right so now we have to set the minimum volumes so we do minimum volumes to one just make it one don't have to be 0.6 and then it will compress, but not enough as what we want. So what we need to do is we need to change the minimum of the the minimum of the old volume. Let's try half of it. Let's you can match that. 0 0.27, 0 0.27. See how it looks. It's almost as good as it is. And let's point two seven six because we have three decimal there we go so now test move it up it seems matching really well can you see it's follow it doesn't go faster or lower or slower so this is a good volume actually so now let me put it back to zero here we go so that's it now, do you understand the uh, set volumes? So basically, we have to make sure that the current volumes and the old volumes maximum are equal. And the minimum can be just one. It doesn't have to be 0 0.6. 
three, seven. And um, now you want to reverse, you change to the maximum instead. And um, now the maximum is stopped at zero, so no more than that, so no reversal. But then now the speed though is because of when we move this, we want the, uh, the, the, uh, the changing values speed of the uh, shape node are matching with the distance. That's why we play, play around with the, these volumes. So, and these volumes are not fixed. So what I did is uh, we just figured out, you could do like this, go to 0.37, it will work. It might be a little faster or a little slower, it still work. So, so it's just a volume that you can play around. So now, the next thing we need to do is, we're done with this, let's save. We need to parent the uh, top locator to the cap. Because the cap will be driven by the body. And then move this fake dot down. Now, the bottom part though need to be followed with the uh, spring base object because we want the bottom to stay. Otherwise, there will be no action of compressing. So put the bottom locator to be a shout of the base, the spring base. Press P, P is shortcut for parenting. So now, if I grab the base though, here we go. This should come down, but because we didn't set negative range, so it would stretch, it stretch only from the top. So, because there's no values to calculate it. Okay. So, this is the correct one. So now, let's bring everything back. Temporary. This is what we're going to do. We're going to parent the uh, cap. Just only the cap. To the down control. So... Parent, oops, sorry. Parent the cap, put the cap as a child of the down control. Press P. And now when you grab the down control, now we need to make decision how far we can push this down. Basically, we want to push down until the compress uh, looks compressed, but not too bad. Can you see? So I can compress. I think that's too low now. So mine is probably, that's all I could do. 0.3 minus 0.343. However, I don't want to have that three decimal. We can do 0.35. That's the minimum. The lowest volume we can go down and you can zoom in if it penetrated it. Oh, it's not penetrated. This look good. So, and also you don't want the body to come down further than the cap. Just to be about right. So we're going to limit this. Open up attribute editor. We are on the down control. And I'm going to select the uh, down control uh, translate node. Open up a limit information. Open up limit information. Now you can see that under translate and expand translate, by default we'll expand only rotation. We want translate. And look at on the current volumes on X. This is what we want. The minimum volumes should be this. So I'm going to assign it to the minimum, which is the negative. So you select the, okay. So make sure expand, oh, oops. Select it again, expand translate under limit information. Translate. And after you insert that volume, you can just type it in if you want, but this way is quicker. So check limit minimum. Now the maximum, turn it on. We know that maximum will be zero. Cannot, don't want to go beyond zero because we are not unmade, push out. 
we're gonna push down on it. And that's it, go to channel box. Now, I'm gonna put this back to zero. Here we go, can you test? You cannot move down below negative 0.95. And cannot go up above zero. That's all you need on this controller. Now, what about the rest? We lock them and then we're gonna hide them in the future. Right now, not hiding yet. Just lock, select it. Because we are not animating anything else, but we're gonna have to parent these somewhere so we don't want to keep unhide and unlock. We just lock them and we're gonna unlock if we need it. So now we're gonna do the second one. So I'm gonna hide everything else except this one. I'm gonna leave everything there on the left side. So that as my reference. So let's create a new spring. We're gonna do two of them. So helix, we already know what this side would be. The, the parameter six, height is 0.6, width is 0.35, oh no, no, 0.32 and radius is just 0 0.02 axis on the uh, subdivision axis is 6 and subdivision chord is 15 we already know right so and now I'm missing something hold on I'm missing the cap let me select that cap and remove hey guys this time because did i parent this cap oh hey guys this cap is already a child of the body uh, of this object so if i hide this object they will be disappeared so can you uh, shift <coughs> uh, unparent first and then you can hide them here we go so that it show up yes Say it again. The, 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 the coil? The spring? Yeah, the spring. Yeah, this is the setup. When you do on your own, you don't have to be exactly the same as mine. It, I mean, you can design anything you want to. And I really encourage you to redesign the shop to relocate it to different position. I think will look more attractive when you show this as your portfolio demo. So now when you're ready, just basically realign it to that tab and modify, align to, align, align, and tumble your scene until you see the center of it. There we go. All right. And then reposition you might want to reposition on site view switch to full so that you can match with the uh, the the left side it doesn't have to be perfect match it's just somehow let's change pivot point to press D hold V key on site view and then just snap it Make sure snap it to its own pivot point, uh, its own shape. Have to look at on font view instead. Ah, no. Right there. Zoom in really close. Here we go. And then I'm going to reposition it. There we go. Rename it, guys, because if you don't rename it, we can't change the input name. So this will be a R spring extend mesh. Okay. And then you're going to duplicate spatial and call compress mesh. So edit duplicate spatial. Turn on duplicate input graph and then change the output of uh, the input, the height 
I think mine is a point. Do you guys remember what I changed? Point two five. I think point two five. Yeah. Yes, point two five, and change the pivot point so that before you move, I gotta move it down a little bit then because I can't see the pivot point. Here we go, right there. Okay, that's E, and then I'm gonna snap it back. I'll give you a few minutes. Even if position a little offset, it's okay. Probably can't really see that much. The we haven't started yet. We will. 0.25? Yeah. Oh. Is it? Yes, it's shorter. So, what is the other one? Do you remember? 0.28? Let's 0.28. It's actually, it's okay. I think mine is 0.25. Yeah, 0.25. Because I, I can see the gap. Okay, so now it's time to make sure the compress, rename to compress. Okay, so freeze transformation and delete history. Modify, please. Alt Shift D shortcut for delete history make it clean and then go ahead create a blend shape so select the uh, compressed one as a target and then select the main object which is the extend and go to deform menu blend shape op open up option I'm gonna delete the target and then I'm gonna name R spring how about uh, spring com compress? Because last time I named match, it's kind of doesn't make sense. And click create. Now we get our spring compress. And let's test, see if it works. Yes. So. Select two spring, deform, blend shape, option, name it, R spring, compress, here we go. Delete target, check topology, local as origin, point, create. Oh, you have to delete history and freeze transform before you do deform a uh, blend chain. Just if you didn't do it, undo until you get to there. Hey guys, uh, sometimes if you do comp uh, if you do a uh, modify and uh, align to doesn't work, just move manually. It sometimes is I don't know what caused that uh, exactly. And it could be that you freeze time form before you move them. That cause kind of a, is instead of create a individual bounding box, they use a selected component of the object, like two or three objects, and then create a bounding box as a grid. And that you will not be able to line them up. <laughs> so sometimes that's that. So just eyeballing it. The key point is the spring extend and spring compress need to be matched. And the location after that, you can move them after. So now, next, go ahead, create distance two, distance node. Create, measure two, distance, and do the same trick. Snap to the highest point, doesn't matter where actually. I'm going to do like that and down here. 
And this one, the distance are shorter than the other one because um, I think the point that I snap, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna name similar name. So this will be a top locator. So I'm gonna call a spring uh, spring top locator. And then the bottom one will be R spring bottom locator. There we go. And you just need to face times form to make it a little nice and clean. And let's change the local scale to point two because we are not going to animate them. When it's too big, it might interrupt. Like this one. Um, I'm going to change to point two two. Make it smaller. Sorry, I'm going to fix the um, size of the locator first. Just point two. You have to change under local scale. Right here. And this like everything we're gonna create another set range node. So let's open up a connection editor right away because we already know what we're gonna do. And open up the hypergraph. Under Maya, I filter to the word set. So set range is already there. I click one more. Now I got second one. I'm gonna call, let me double click the, I double click on this node right here under utility bin. It will bring it up to the outline, uh, to the attribute editor. Let's name this. This is gonna be R spring set range. You can call R shop something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. So now, first thing we get. Yeah. Um, you go to hypershade, and then right here, turn on utility, and then just filter by typing search set. It will see you will see the set range on the filter. Type set. Yeah. Create a new one, and then you use the uh, utility bin. Double click it. It will bring the. Uh, uh, attribute added. So you're going to load to the input and then find the distance to and which we I forgot to rename my distance. So just select the distance to here and uh, on the attribute editor if you already open it it might select select the first tab do not select the second tab because we want to rename the whole thing. So it will be our spring distance. And I'm going to remove the word dimension because it's too long. And when you press enter, we'll, we'll rename on the second tab. Now, you can active the second tab. Click select and load to the output column. Find distance, add to build. And on the input, we're going to input to volumes X. Here we go. So now we're going to reverse. We're going to put the, uh, yeah. Uh, how do you get the distance again? You have to select the distance node, okay. attribute editor, and then, where's my distance? Here we go. And then second tab that contain distance. You click select, and then you load it to the left. Okay. I'll wait a little bit. And make sure set range load to the right, which is input. And go ahead, output distance node, the distance attribute into the volumes X. Now, reselect the right spring set range, reload to the left will be output. And we're going to output the volumes X to the blend shape node. So blend shape node is inside under a spring shape. And click on spring tab, make sure you add attribute adder, find 
you might need to click expand like cycling the hierarchy until you see the screen compress if you don't if your name are different than mine just click on the tab and look for weight if you see a blend shape label so it means you're in the right spot so that's the shape that we wanted to load so click select reload to the input now you can output the volumes x out volumes x to weight r string compress mesh and that's it and close okay so now can you see when we do that match is switched a little bit right away because we need to work on the set range so select the set range the rsi open up attribute editor right here these volumes need to be matched with the old volumes and also we already know that minimum if we move it right now nothing move so i can move it a little bit right around here in the mid point go back to set range so minimum it need to start at zero here we go uh, one sorry we already know it and the old minimum volumes though we want it to begin at point three so point three here we go i think point three might be too fast compared to the uh, so i would do point three two uh oh so point two nine that's about right. 0.29 or 0.295. I think I can do 0.29. 0.285. That's it. Can you see it's touched there? So basically, these volumes just play around until you get right there. Here we go. So now when I move, so now ignore this part because it's over range on when we move it to 30 so but you want to look at in between can you see the good range is when nothing go too fast or too slow there's about at the same level as extend or compress right there except for right here this is out of range so that's that's the volumes that you wanted to look so it's mean you need to play around with this that's all okay so now we're done with this. I'm going to put to zero and bring everything back. And basically, you're going to put, oh, oh, oh sorry, I forgot. Put the top locator to be a shell of the arc cap. Bottom locator to be a shell of the spring base. And that's it. So now you need to parent the cap itself to the move down or to the down control and that's all you need press p so now when we move down control we'll control two part two spring here we go and can you see that's it for today guys i hope that is not too much confusion um, I'm gonna save this and we done on the spring I'm gonna stop the video okay